Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we're returning to the neighborhood with My Friendly Neighborhood Part 3. Now, in the last video, we looked at the secrets contained within this demo. I've really, really been enjoying this game, so it was really cool to go around and find that by using camera mode, we could see out of bounds in the levels and unlock a host of really cool secrets. Now, at the time of that video, I said I'd come back and make a follow up if any more secrets were found, and at the time of making that video, there actually weren't any more secrets to find at all. We'd covered everything we could have at the time of that video. However, since then, the game has been updated or the demo has been updated by the developer and he's actually added in a few new secrets for us to find. So for the sake of being a completionist in this video, we're going to check those last few secrets out and see what we're missing. And also guys, what we're going to do as well is make a story themed video looking into this demo and what the actual story for the game when it comes out may be. So yeah, stay tuned for the story video on this game. But with that said guys, sit back, relax and let's dive into this newly updated version of My Friendly Neighbourhood and see what new secrets await us. Okay, so the thing that we're going to check out first guys is we're going to go out of here and we're actually going to go and check out the disembodied doors which were out of bounds because I believe that is where the secrets have been added into the game. Now these doors used to just take us out into other rooms, you know, elsewhere in the level but now, apparently, they hold some new secrets so let's check it out. Yeah, look at this. We've got a room, a new room completely. And this room kind of looks like all hand-drawn, like it's cardboard. Well, the walls are made out of cardboard, or they look like they're made out of cardboard. And everything has been like drawn in crayon. It looks like a kid's like coloured in this room, doesn't it? And this must have been like somewhere where they filmed part of the show or something, because we've got a camera here where, you know, the cameraman and the director, I assume, would have sat. We've got a seat here, maybe where the producer would have sat or something. And then we've got two seats next to a fireplace. <laughs> we've drawn on fire. Obviously, My Friendly Neighborhood was a show, like a TV puppet show that was educational and taught children stuff like the alphabet and right from wrong and stuff. This is obviously some kind of set used in that show. I'm guessing it's like a story time, as I said, a story time part of a show because we've got all these books here. And perhaps, you know, this is where the puppets would sit with the presenter and say, this is a story about the boy who cried wolf or something, I don't know. What's it got a door over here? Oh, we can clip through it. Nice. Roof access. Can we go up this? Can't interact with a ladder. Maybe I can just clip out of it. Nope. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything else we can do here, guys. Just kind of float around. Look at the room. I don't think anything else unlocks. Is there anything else we can interact? Oh, can interact with a chair. Okay. Can't seem to do anything though. There must be something we can do with this chair. There must be something we can put in the chair or something to maybe unlock something else. But because this is a demo, I don't know if this is just maybe like a room from the final game. And at the moment, we can't actually do anything else with it. I wonder if there is something we can put in this chair. If I find out there is, guys, I'll add it into the final video because at the moment I have no idea what we're going to do with a chair. There's like a puppet mangled up in a locker, so I don't know if we can maybe take the puppet from the locker and place it in this chair. Maybe if we empty our suitcase, we can make enough room to store the puppet's body or something and like take it over, put it in the chair. I'll try that and if it works, I'll include it in the video. That's the only thing I can think of, like a puppet that we could perhaps put in this chair to do something else in this room and maybe that would open the roof access, I'm not sure. But for now guys, this is just everything that we can do with this room. I don't think there's any bricks we can interact with here or anything else. So yeah, we'll just head out for now. Cool looking room though, I think you'll agree. Probably something that will end up in the final game in a meaningful way, I imagine. Hey! Sorry Norman, sorry about that. So. Yeah, guys, there's a, a puppet, as you can see in this locker here, or like, mangled up. I don't know if we can somehow, like, take this and put it in the chair. I just thought I'd show it you in case you weren't sure what I was talking about. But, yeah, like, this is the only thing I could think of, but I can't seem to be able to click on it, even when I've emptied the suitcase out. So my theory about using this puppet for the chair is unfortunately not happening, at least not what I can see. There's no way to take that puppet and uh, transport it across the level. There was also this poster which I haven't actually read on my playthrough and this might tie into the lore of the game I think. So I'll quickly read this to you before we go to the other door. So this is a poster for We Fix It and this is Ray's poster. Ray of course is the weird frog-like creature who was a repairman on the TV show. 
Now, as you can see on the poster, there's lots of incorrect wording that's been crossed out. So it seems like somebody's written this who doesn't have a very good hold of like grammar and spelling and stuff like that. And so all the mistakes have been crossed out. And I don't know if maybe if we look at these mistakes and put the words that are crossed out together, if they might make up some kind of like cryptic sentence that ties into the lore of the game or something. But I'm just going to read you this poster anyway. I'm not going to read the bits that are crossed out currently. It says, we're going to fix it. Benny and Carl are going to the workshop. Do you have a hammer? We ate a snack and then fixed the toy. I replaced all his tyres, then cleaned their car. The wheel is broken. When the kids came to the shop, they began their work. I dropped the box of nails on the floor. Why are you still reading this? I want to go home. The gears are made of weak strips of metal. How many nails are you holding? Ray is your friend. She won't do anything near the light switch. The janitor's closet has a buddy in the ceiling. At what time are Righty, Lefty and Midi coming to visit? So these seem like maybe new puppets or just characters on the show in general. The factory floor does not have a bottom. Chip is a very good dog. The light is leaving all of us. And then the rest of it we can't really make out, unfortunately. But the fact that the last line says the light is leaving all of us is interesting. So it seems like the puppets were once good, now they're turning evil. That's going to tie into the story. You're gonna have to wait for my story analysis on that guys but that's an interesting poster with a lot of lore ramifications so worth keeping in mind and definitely interesting to read in this video right so we're into the workshop area now guys the we fix it area and this is where there was a secret door that in the last episode just took us straight back out into the hall it's right here this time we're going to try it and see if it reveals anything new and it does! Welcome to the cube room! There is a 25% chance there is something interesting on the other side of this cube. Good luck. So it looks like we've got to get to the other side of this cube and we might find something interesting. We've got a 1 in 4 chance. So yeah, let's go. Oh my god, this is really slow guys, by the way. <laughs> As you can see, look, look how slowly we're moving. I'm actually moving forward now, believe it or not. And it's like super, super slow. So I'm probably going to cut to when I get to the end of a cube and I really hope there is something on the other side and we don't waste all this time going round. I guess that's part of the fun though, right? So I'll cut to when I get to the other side of a cube, guys. I won't show you my progress going all of the way round this. And we'll see if anything awaits us on the other side. Here we go. Is there going to be anything on the other side? The moment of truth. Oh no, there isn't. It says... Sorry, no luck. Try again. There's a door on this side to reset. So we got to actually retry, guys. That took me, like, about three minutes to go all the way around the side of the cube. Okay, so we're going to have to go to that door. Look at how tiny the door is. You can see the scale of this thing. Because that, that's an actual door there. So we're going to have to go all the way back, guys. We're going to have to try again. I'm going to cut to my successful attempt finding something on this cube. I have the conviction to do it. I'm determined. So, yeah. See you on the other side. Okay, right, here we go guys, we've got to the end of the cube again. This is my second attempt. Let's see if we're lucky this time, hopefully. We are, yes! We actually are, we've got concept art, nice! Wow, we've got loads of concept art, this is actually going to take a while. So yeah, here we can see the Norman jackets. Now these are obviously concept designs for Norman and his clothing in the game. A really cool design, I think. You know, you can imagine these actually becoming merch for the game because they're actually quite cool designs and they wouldn't actually look out of place in something like Sesame Street or something. The artwork's really good as well. Like, whoever's drawn these, a uh, great concept artist, I must say. And then we've got Ray, look. So let's have a look at Ray next. Now, he is the repairman, of course, and he did the show or the segment of the show called Ray's Fix, as you can see from the back of his jacket here. Dread End. I wonder what that means, Dread End. Is that, like, just the area? But you can see the toolbox there has actual legs on it. Like, they're hanging down when he's carrying it around. So the toolbox definitely used to talk and, you know, hand Ray stuff. Bit quirky, bit creepy. Uh, and then, you know, Ray has a wrench there. And I do wonder if maybe we're going to actually see Ray in the full game as like a boss encounter. And maybe he's going to come out and attack us. We had a look at his body in the last video. And it seems to be this giant, like, centipede-like body. So he definitely could be like a really creepy boss encounter if we have to face him and, you know, actually like shoot at him in a big arena or something. But that's Ray, that's his design from the show. Very kind of freaky. So let's move down to this one. Now this is a picture, by the look of it, as, of Ricky. 
Ricky was the little sock puppet that we talked to at the beginning of the demo, and he is voiced, I think, by the YouTuber Arlo, I've been told, which is kind of cool. So that's Ricky. He's one of my favorite parts of this game. And just a bit of concept art for him there. Next, we have the Secretary Second Pass. It's actually called the Novelist in the finished game, but maybe it used to be called the Secretary. It says different books for different styles of firing. Oh, okay. So it seems like we're going to be able to actually get like different like equipables for this gun. So maybe like some fire like fire rounds, like flame rounds, you know, some would fire like freeze rounds or acid rounds. Kind of like you get in the Resident Evil games with different types of like grenade launcher rounds. Either way, it seems like we're going to be able to modify the novelist shotgun with different novels in order to give us different firepower. That's really cool to know. Next, we've got these two characters, and I think the one on the left is called Junebug. I don't know what the one on the right is called. I can't remember her name. But either way, these are the two characters who appear in the demo aside from Norman to chase us about. Junebug is my favorite one. She's like really kind of chatty and eccentric. I just really love her personality and the kind of things that she says along the way. Her hand is actually like hanging down there though. That looks kind of grim. Like her hand is detached. I don't remember seeing that in the demo. Maybe they took it out. And likewise, this one has a cane, but we don't see them with a cane when we play through the demo. So I'm not sure if maybe like these are just work in progress things that never materialized or if this is going to be in the final game. But again, that's the art for those. Let's move on to the next. So the next one we have is the Roller Dexter second pass, which is the second design I guess the Roller Dexter went through. This is the Roller Dexter gun, which fires the A, B, C, D, E, etc. alphabet letters at the different enemies. It's a really unique weapon. Yeah, not much more to say about that. It was just a concept for the gun. It ends up in the game and it's really fun to use. Next, we've got this rat. Not much more to say about it. It's just a little rat, so I'm going to move straight on. And we've got one final image at the bottom, the save buddy. So this is the save buddy. This is the save station. I don't remember it having a little face on it, though, unless I missed that. But I think maybe they changed the design so it doesn't have a face on there. But it looks like originally when you pulled it down, it was going to have a smiley face to say, hey, you saved the game. And now it just has like a green light, I think. And it says players can save and they hear the save song. I don't remember hearing the save song either. Maybe that's something that's also going to be added in. Or maybe they just changed the design because it didn't work and it became annoying or something. I'm not sure. But either way, that's the save station. It does end up in the game. It looks slightly different to that though. We've also got a message at the bottom and it says, you got lucky. Here's some concept art used to make the characters credits to Jesse Turner. So Jesse Turner is the person who has drawn all these amazing pieces of concept art. So what I'm going to do now is just zoom out, show you everything, guys. And unless I find anything else in this demo, I think that is going to be the video. So there we go, the whole wall of concept art, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is probably where I'm going to leave it for this episode of My Friendly Neighborhood. I think we found everything in the demo now. The developer has been packing in a whole ton of stuff to make sure that we can keep coming back and playing it and finding new things. And there potentially could be another update with even more stuff in the weeks to come. The game, I don't know when it releases, but it's shaping it to be really, really good. And as I said, I'm going to bring you a story explained type video, not an actual story explained video because the game's not out, we don't know this story, but a video where I kind of dip into the lore, look at all the different notes, try and work out what exactly is happening in this TV studio and what story may be told in the final game, what happened to these puppets, you know, what's been going down in general. There's so many questions right now, but I do believe this demo gives us some firm jumping off points to start answering those important questions. So we'll look at that in the days to come. With that said guys, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one, and I will see you all on the next one.